Now there is the baby Airbus, the Airbus A318, and there also is the baby Boeing, the 737-600, smaller than the 800. Oh yeah, doesn't it look tiny? Yeah, it's interesting how both Airbus and Boeing made pretty similar variants of their flagship model. And it's also interesting how both failed to make them, with the A318 only having been built around 80 times, but not really flying around at all anymore, and with the 737-600 even failing more, only 69 aircraft of these were produced. Really rare to see them nowadays. In fact, it's called the forgotten Boeing 737 variant, the 600 indeed. Right now, there are only 13 of these flying around. Can you imagine that? You know, it's really interesting, the 737-600 and the A318 are very much the same length, 31 meters. Okay, the A318 is 20 centimeters longer than the 737-600, but they're definitely over 14 meters shorter than the longer brothers of them, the A321 or the 737 MAX 10. It's really interesting how these airplanes, though they are the same, same cockpit, can be so, so different. Now, the reason why both Airbus and Boeing failed with their short planes is because when you look at a plane that only can seat 100 people or so, I'd rather look at an ERJ, which is a lot more fuel saving than the CFM 56 engines, you know, and I guess overall cheaper to operate as well, but the 737-600 can be quite joyful to fly. I mean, look, we can already raise the nose. We can do... A Actually, didn't Matt wanted to do this, but look at the performance on the takeoff. Very... Very impressive. Let's press away. Anyway, I've created a much shorter version of the 737-600 because the 600 is just way too long still. How about the 737-60? Uh -huh. Everybody, I've made the 737-600 14 feet shorter even. So this is not the baby bus, but rather the fetus bus. <gasps> right. And it definitely broke the lot livery. Um, and this looks ridiculous because I've kept the same wingspan, the same engines, the same tail section of the plane, only just shortened the fuselage. And well, the cockpit really looks the same. We have the eyebrow windows, which are typical of the 737-600 for some reason. I don't even know what the use of them are, but anyway. And we can go into the cabin, which is uh, really uh, not big at all anymore. We now only have 16 rows of seats right here, which means 69 people can be on board this flight. Obviously, the space that we have to keep free in order to keep the exit row safe right here is half of the cabin space. So that's uh, interesting. Yeah, this is definitely a very short... 737. Now, once again, economically, this plane would be extremely stupid because it has the operating cost of a big 737, but it doesn't fit as many passengers. Uh, there's not really a point. Anyway, where I see a point is performance. I mean, the smaller Airbus and Boeing planes are known for being high performance. The A318, for example, is the biggest plane that's able to fly into London City Airport. So let's take a look now and uh, get full power into this plane. After all, we weigh a little bit less, which is nice. But at the same time, we cannot carry as much weight because of the structural integrity of the shortened fuselage anyway. Going full power with this, by the way, we're carrying quite a lot of people. Now, this is a fully weight wise maxed out airplane, so let's uh, see how this performs. Oh my. Oh. Oh. I uh, may need to reform the center of gravity. Holy moly. I've. All right. There we go. I guess these engines are now a little bit too strong. I mean, they look a little bit too big for this airplane. But there we go. We can. Uh, we have taken off and we can literally. We can conquer the skies in this one landing gear up. This is, I mean, realistic physics, but like it's a, it's a bit, oh, we've got a little bit insane. Oh, I've got, yeah. Maybe just shortening the fuselage and keeping the wing the same size as much as the engines has maybe overpowered this airplane a little bit. And so we've done, uh, done a little loop accidentally, but we're able to fly. Uh, okay, we just cannot go very fast. <laughs> All right, we're just doing loops one after the other. Great, on Polish Arrow. All right. Hey, this is great. This is uh, perfect. Yeah, this is very interesting though. Turns out maybe the 737-600 is the shortest this plane could ever be. I sort of take off here, maybe not give in full power perhaps, because like otherwise this plane would just uh, do loops because of those wings just being way too big and they just do too much lift. 
Uh 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 don't do this again. Don't don't you dare. Don't do a wheelie. Alright, look at this. All fine. Yeah, that was a quick, quick takeoff run. Well, if we if we keep it slow on the nose, I'm pretty sure this is fine. Yeah. Maybe the autopilot can help us a little bit. Not fly a loop again. Yeah, the climb performance. This thing is just way too overpowered. We definitely we would only need one engine on this thing, really. <laughs> Well, this is perfect. Yeah, look at this autopilot. Let's turn left and maybe not climb so much. Yeah, no, never mind. If we, if we keep it calm here, this thing can fly perfectly. Look at this. This is totally normal flight. We just don't go full power on the engines. Otherwise, the thing will do loops. But I'm pretty sure the performance overall should be amazing. I mean, let's talk about landing this plane. I mean, because of the extremely high wing ratio of this guy, especially with the flaps being able to be put out to all the way to 40 degrees, this thing probably needs like five knots of airspeed to at all fly look at this i mean i'm not kidding 150 knots we're so far away from stalling out in fact we're supposed to be stalling at 80 knots by the way let me try a different livery what does uh westjet look like one of the operators of the 600 well perhaps could also be operating the 60 the vester whatever look at this i I feel like there are some small use cases where this airplane would be handy with the very big wing and the very good stall performance. I mean, okay, they would probably sell only like five of these, but let's talk about like island hopping to crazy airports where you don't have long runways. Being able to fly at 90 knots is really not bad. But I do have to say this plane controls really poorly. Oh! Whoa, that nearly stalled out, but because of the extreme engine power, we're able to just immediately recover this. Did you see this? That would have been death in any other airliner. Yes! The immediate power we can kick into this plane go around is just insane. Other than that, though, the airplane flies very poorly. I'm really unable to steer it properly. Like, giving only the smallest of engine power really reduces our ability to get the nose down at all, which is so funny. This airplane flies so poorly. Oh, okay. yeah, no, this is like just insane. All right, let's try to land this airplane. Yeah, yeah, you're okay. All right, that was a bit of hard landing. Don't, no problem. We can go full power into the braking, reverse thrust, fully activated. And then we can stop really, really, really quickly as well. Not bad at all. It's just that it will take a few go-arounds to learn this airplane at first, for sure. Yeah, it is funny. Somehow I've been able to build the worst flying 737 in the world. Uh, I really, I mean, they have made it worse than the Max. Um, I mean, just the fact that when you give in full power, the, the engine is just, it, it is so powerful that... The nose just lifts up like that is just insane. But there we go. We're already on a good, well, yes, path to uh, rotate. So this thing should probably be able to fly at literally any runway. Maybe even helipad. Okay, probably not that. But you know, it is all fun and games until it can actually operate on the shortest runway in the world. And I think we just can. Especially takeoff wise, I don't see an issue at all. Because, like, when these engines do run to full power, um, like this, look at this. Yeah, uh, yeah, the nose lifts up. Let's not have that happen. Yeah, yeah. But the plane automatically faces up so much, it's able to surely take off without trouble. Look at this. Landing gear up. And, oh. Sometimes, at least, uh, we kind of stalled out. Okay, never mind. Actually, this airplane is useless. Because, like,. Even in the normal flying scenarios, this thing flies really poorly. Like, genuinely, I've barely have any control. You really control this plane very much just with the throttle because of the huge engines. But all right, I want to keep a bit of a, you know, healthy airspeed. 110 knots is very healthy for this plane, even though we can be extremely heavy. Let's go full weight. No problem. This plane doesn't really care. Okay, you got to really lock in with this airplane. Okay, looking okay. There we go. Let's go ahead and put the nose down now. Maybe, maybe a bit of a harder landing. Who cares? This plane doesn't weigh much, so the landing gear probably doesn't. There you go. Let's go ahead and stop now. Reverse thrust into the max. Um, right. Hey, this is actually useless then. Yeah, it turns out the 737-60 would only uh, be worse. Um, I've literally made no improvements to any of this. I've only made a plane that flies extremely poorly and does a wheelie whenever you go full power because the engines are just so powerful. Great. Yeah, uh, all right. No, no, no. Don't do that. That kills their speed a little bit. So, everybody, what do you, what do you think? Um, this is the death of the Boeing and Airbus baby airplanes, and I definitely see a reason why. 
Because, like, why? So, ever thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night. The special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters, Guns Killer, R27, James Duram, That Dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishititsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.